Hey everyone, Bridget from Gilded here to give you a brief walkthrough of setting up the Gilded app so you can ensure that all your financial projections are accurate. Now, if you already went through the onboarding process, chances are your dashboard graph already has a lot of data filled into it. But if you just skip through it or you want to know how to edit and modify things, I'm going to show you everything you need to do in the video here. So the first thing I would suggest that you do is navigate to more in the left hand menu and go to settings here you want to ensure that all your information is correct i actually wasn't born in 1990 but we'll leave that here if you have a partner or spouse that you're planning your finances with you want to add their birth year this will unlock all spousal support inside the app and will let you account for their salary their tfsa their rsp everything like that I don't have a spouse, so I'm going to leave uh, their birthday out here. You want to set your retirement year. You can always change this later. Uh, this one is set so this person retires at age 65 years. And you want to set your end of plan or end of life year. Of course, no one knows when they'll pass away, but just give your best guess. You want to set any unused TFSA contribution room. I'm going to use $50,000 in this example, and I set $75,000 as unused RSP contribution room. If you don't know your unused TFSA or RSP contribution room, you can get that from your MyCRA account. You can also set those numbers for a spouse if you unlock the spousal features by putting their birthday in. Otherwise, we can just go to update settings and the app is ready to use. The first financial data we want to add is our assets. So I'm going to go ahead and add a TFSA. We'll just call this my TFSA and we'll say there's $15,000 in this account and the annual contribution I'm contributing $7,000 per year. The app is going to assume that your TFSA is invested and earning an average rate of return of 8%. If yours is more or less than that, you can toggle on custom interest rate and set that. You can also specify if this is a spousal asset. If you've added your spouse's birthday under settings, this is my TFSA as we've labeled it. So I will not be labeling it as a spousal asset. We're going to go ahead and add an RSP to same thing. We'll call this my RSP. The balance will say is just $10,000 and I'm contributing $2,000 a year to this account. I'm going to leave, um, again, the interest rate at 8% because that's about what my RSP is earning. And finally, I'm also going to add a house, my primary residence. So we'll just call this my house. We'll say this house is worth $600,000. I live in a soft real estate market, so I'm going to make a change here. Instead of saying it's appreciating with inflation of 2.1%, I'm going to set it to 1%. Yours might be higher or lower depending on the real estate market that you live in. We'll save that. And those are all the assets that I'm going to be tracking in Gilded. I'm now going to go to liabilities. Because I have a house, I also have a mortgage. We'll call it my mortgage. And we'll say I still owe $450,000 on my house. You can set a custom interest rate. It's going to assume 4.5%, but we'll set mine uh, to 4%. And you can also set a custom amortization period. The app is going to assume 25 years, but yours may be more or less depending on your situation. We'll say I've already been paying my home for a while, so I only have 20 years left on my mortgage. We'll save this. And from that information, the app is actually going to automatically calculate your mortgage payment. So you do not need to enter it anywhere. It's already assuming that for you. We're also going to say, let's just say I also have a car loan. We'll call it my car loan. And and the balance of that is $14,000 owing. Custom interest rate will say I didn't get a good rate and I owe 6% on my car, but I only have to pay it for four more years. We'll then save that uh, and then all our liabilities are entered. We'll go to our income and expenses. We'll say this person is earning a salary. We'll call it my salary of $90,000 per year. It's beginning now and ending in retirement. Maybe you have an income source that goes beyond that. You can always set it to end of life. But for most people, their main income, especially their salary, is going to be ending in retirement. But this is useful for things if you're receiving the Canada Child Benefit or child support that will end uh, at a specific year. You can set the end year there as well. Or if you have an income source that just just goes on for life or is one time like receiving an inheritance you can set the parameters for that you can say that it's ongoing or you receive it just one time this is taxable income we're going to assume that your salary is growing with inflation at 2.1 percent maybe your income is growing faster or slower than that you can set a custom growth rate i'm going to leave it alone 
if you had unlocked spousal features in this, you can specify whether an income stream belongs to your spouse or you by toggling it on as a spousal setting. So we'll just go ahead and save that. And then for my expenses, let's add some expenses. As I already mentioned, if you've created a liability like a mortgage or car loan or any kind of debt owing, Gilded will automatically calculate the payments for you. So you do not need to enter them as expenses here. Instead, we just want to count out of pocket expenses. So we'll just uh, do a broad living expenses one. We'll say this is $2,500 per month. It's starting now and it's going until the end of life because I'm always going to have expenses regardless of where I am. So that's just what I'm setting this as. It might be tempting to get really nuanced here and add a ton of custom expenses that are very small, like your Netflix for $20 per month or your grocery bill for $900 per month. I would encourage you not to have a dozen expenses and rather just choose a big broad category uh, like this and just call it living expenses and put everything in there. It's easier to track overall and easier to manage. The only exception would be for expenses that maybe end at a certain time, like childcare is a large expense, but it's only for a temporary period. It won't be till end of life. And maybe some larger expenses like rent are nice to track on an interval individual basis. But for the most part, I would just put everything under living expenses and count it as one big thing. So now that we've entered all our assets, liabilities, income and expenses, we can navigate to our dashboard graph and see our entire financial picture. So this is filled out beautifully and everything's green. It doesn't say projection failed, which means I am financially secure based on what I've entered here. You can see a summary of my assets and liabilities below the graph. This little cake is marking my retirement age and I can see that I retire at age 65 with 2.5 million, which is awesome. My current net worth is around 147,000, but I'm on track for a very financially secure retirement. If you ever want to see the details of your finances for any year of your life, you can just click on the graph for the year that you want to visualize. It will show you your projected employment income based on your salary and rate of growth. It will tell you the estimated income tax deductions that you'll have to pay that year. And we update these numbers every single year. So they're always current and we keep our estimates in line with the historical averages. So the income tax estimations that we're doing are really, really good. You can also be able to see um, your spouse's data, and then it will give you totals for the household. You can see in this case at age 58, I'm doing really, really well. I only have $48,000 in expenses and I have $60,000 extra left over. That sounds excellent. Oh, it's because I have fully paid off my mortgage and my car by this point. So good for me. I'm maxing out my TFSA. I'm also contributing uh, to my RSP and my home is appreciating a little bit in value. You can see a full summary here and you can see the ending balance of all those accounts there. So I, I'm doing pretty well in this scenario. You can also look at years in the future when you're retired, and it will actually show estimates of the CPP and OAS you'll receive. It's going to show how much you have to withdraw from your registered retirement income funds. That's what your RSPs turn into in retirement. It will then give you that gross income, your estimated taxes and deductions, as well as tell you what your projected expenses and whether you have an excess or shortfall in retirement. Now, if you have an excess or shortfall, the app is actually going to do with it what it tells you. In this case, it looks like I have it set to spend it, but you can specify whether you want your excess money to be spent or saved. And to do that, you just want to navigate to priorities here in the left hand menu. You can see this is the default uh, setup. We're going to pay down all debt, maximize the RSP, maximize the TFSA, and then spend the rest. If you have a different order that you want to do things like, let's say I want to maximize my TFSA, and then I just want to spend everything else. So I'm actually not going to contribute anything to my RSP. I don't know if that's the best financial choice I can make, but let's just pretend I did that. We'll leave that as is, and then we can navigate to the dashboard and see how my projections have changed. So I've actually retired with way less money. You can see now when I hover over age 65, instead of retiring with 2.5 million, I'm only going to retire with 1.9 million. And that makes sense. In this case, I've opted to spend everything left over instead of put it in my RSP. And I can see right away how that's affected my overall net worth and my retirement. So that's a really good thing to know. Maybe I actually don't like that. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm also going to 
do my RSP, but I'm just going to put in a little bit. I'm going to add a thousand dollars a year to my RSP and see how that changes everything. And then I'm going to spend the rest. And sure enough, the dashboard graph updates that actually didn't make a big difference because a thousand dollars a year isn't a large amount that you can see that you can test out different scenarios. You can also test out different scenarios in the financial plan section, which I'll go over in another video. Another thing you want to look at is your withdrawal priorities. The app uh, defaults to withdrawing from the RSP first, the TFS say second and non-registered account third. Uh, personally, I would reorder these. I would take from a non-registered uh, account first and TFSA last. So actually that's correct. That's how I want it. And I'll leave it that way. I'm going to reset these to default. So we'll say I'm resetting my cash priorities uh, to default. The withdrawal priorities stayed the same. And now we'll take a look at my dashboard graph. And it looks, it looks really good. I love this $2.5 million retirement more than the other. Once these are all set up, your gilded projections and estimates are ready to go. You can always make adjustments anywhere here by clicking on the pencil icon to edit or the trash can icon to delete any entry. But this should give you a beautiful summary of where your finances are likely to end up over the course of your lifetime so you can make better informed financial decisions and you can even test out those financial decisions in Gilded to see how they impact your net worth overall. I want to thank you again for signing up for Gilded and I hope you get so much use out of this app and it empowers you and informs you on how to make money-driven decisions to live the rich life that you want.